I'm Lee, and I'm the owner of Supportive Guide. Hi, I'm Benjamin. I'm the owner of Are You Gay? So today we're going to talk about what kind of leader do you want to be for your team? That's a big question. The big thing for me when it comes to leadership and uh, having a team that you need to uh, take charge of. Um, Firstly, you don't just get to be the man in charge who doesn't have to do anything and tell people what to do. That's there are too many of those in the world. It doesn't work. Personal opinion, most of the time when people leave a job, yes, money can be a factor, but leadership is a bigger factor. People will leave a job that worth that is worth the money because they don't want to be with the person who's in charge. So it's fostering an environment where people are comfortable with me to say, hey, this isn't right, hey, this needs to be fixed, something like that. So it's not always being in a position of, hey, I'm like what I say goes, right? There too many times. It's more collaborative. Yeah, it's uh, there. Are, when I first started uh, the store, um, I had issues where I would plan something out and I would do something and go through this and they just followed along they did what i said and everything was good and then like three months later they were like yeah we were thinking this would have been good and i was like yeah yeah that's way better never occurred to me and it's one of those things where i had to start having them go okay this is what i'm planning on doing does that make sense to you guys rather than saying this is what i'm planning on doing execute it because they would always just be used to people saying, hey, no, this is what I think we should do. That's what you're going to do. There's no other questions, nothing else. So making sure your team understands that their input is as valuable, if not more valuable than mine. Um, I think that's very important. I also, from what you were saying, it kind of sounds like sometimes as a manager, things sound amazing in theory. But in practice, they can't be executed that way. And so yes. the people who know whether or not it can be executed that way would be the actual staff on the floor themselves. And if you're not giving room for feedback, then it, your execution may never actually happen the way you want because it's just not feasible. Yeah, I, exactly. Uh, I started doing a, a biweekly meeting now that we have where I have them come in and I go, hey, here's this, here's something that uh, we're going to do. And occasionally they'll pipe up and go, or you could do that. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so I take, you know, and it's worth taking notes on those kinds of things, because even if the initial idea or the change they're implementing doesn't work for what you're going for, that can at least inspire maybe something that's halfway between, or maybe there's something else that would work that way that you need to, you know, handle in a different manner. So that's that's big. Communication's huge. I'm very bad at it. I don't even try to imply I'm good at it. It's I am incredibly bad at communication. It's it's a life skill. I'm that bad. And I have always tried to be open and honest about how things are going with them because that's another thing it's if you let your employees know hey we're in this situation this is how things have to go if you're being open and honest with them they may have suggestions on what to improve or they may say hey i understand do you need me to start doing this do you need this they are usually people are willing to help other people out in general but the moment you get demanding about that help, that's when people say, no, I'm not willing to help you anymore. So it's as much as, yes, there's a certain amount of, oh, am I now putting things on them that shouldn't really be in their job description and all that, but they all understand the situation. It's a new store, right? Up and around nine months. So, the experience of helping them understand that their roles here 
are as important, if not more important than mine, has really helped drive their interest in each step of the, the business. It's led to, we now have sections of the store that they have full control of. They, I just say, you know, that's your thing. Do with it that whatever works. I may have a tweak here or there of something I would like to adjust, but other than that, it's your thing. Go do it. And so they do that. One of my employees, uh, I recently gave them uh, the card counter to organize. They organized it. It looked fantastic. The organization, my only thing was, you know, some cards are worth more valuable than others. Let's try and get those to the front. That was my only change to his entire thing. Every other part of his organization was perfect. So when you give people a chance to be proactive, be in charge of something, they usually like to step up in that fashion. I would say there's a few key things that I want to point out that I think are lacking in other uh, fields, well, not in other fields, in management in general, is you provided a level of transparency to your employees. Of mm -hmm. This is what we might be struggling with. This is what's going on. And because of that, they also had this level of empathy that they rise to the occasion to help support and create those ideas because they were given the opportunity versus you get if you get stuck in a corner because you're struggling and you're saying we have to do it this way and no one understands why, it kind of creates this power dynamic that's not so great versus someone being like, we are struggling here. This is what I'm going to try to do. And hey, we you guys have ideas too. Let's start them. So yeah. I think... That completely, one, also lowers turnover because people aren't unsure of what you're going to do. They know what's happening. They're very aware. But also, people do, if you're supporting your staff, they want to support you. Yeah. So I see that with what you're doing. And then the ownership piece, I think what people, especially in retail environment, is each person has their own skill set. And they could actually be really good at this one thing. And you're giving them the opportunity to really shine in that moment. And it's not, um, you're just one store, but it's not like this big box business that has to be the same every single direction because you are this one store. So it can be a little bit more unique, but also allows them to kind of shine. And then you can be like, well, I know the business. We kind of need to kind of sell the more expensive cards. So let's put them up front. So mm -hmm. I like that balance you're taking because it really allows them to build that confidence too what they're doing the only thing i would add to that is i think it can be taken up to that maybe not the biggest big box level but into a, a larger size area even if i had five six stores the unique power of allowing people to dictate their workspace means that they will be more comfortable in it and so uh some people are like more active and oh here's this you know they kind of like to drive people to the area that they're in charge of because they want to show off their work right and if you go to that bigger area if you tell someone hey this is how you must do it it doesn't matter how much work they put into making it look like your thing it's not theirs right they Sure, they did the work, but it's not their idea. It's not their display. When you say, hey, go do this, that this is your area, they really like to bring people to it. And it means when something's happening in that area, they also come to me and go, hey, we're low on this. We need to work on this. This is happening. And it's like, oh, cool. I don't have to manage that part of the store. You're managing that part of the store now. And it gives me, it frees me up to work on areas that help them in other areas. I wholeheartedly agree that that could be incorporated into big box stores. And I see this fear. Maybe you, you can talk through what you think could happen, but I see this fear of people being like, well, the customer expects this from us. They want it to be the same. They want to go to every store and know exactly what they're expecting and that's their comfortability with it. Um, and on the other end, there's certain cities across the world and in the, in our country too, that have certain rules for certain businesses that they have to conform into that. Like 
there's a German city in in Washington where all businesses have to look just like uh, a certain standard. And so these corporations kind of form to that. So what is your take on a balance of making it comfortable for the customers, but also making it unique for the area versus unique for the employees? I think the idea that a customer wants everything to be cookie cutter is just incorrect. Um, one of the nice things is when you go into a place is to explore it, right? If it, you're coming to a place that you've never been to before, you're interested. Now, don't get me wrong, some things are usually the same and are always effective. Um, what is it like Ulta and Sephora and all of them? They put things that smell nice and look nice right by the entrance because it draws people in. Yeah, of course, right? Every business should do something like that, should do something that helps get people go, oh, hey. But once you're inside, uh, keeping things always the same is a monotonous feeling. And it doesn't matter if it's because you choose to do the same thing every day in the same location and everything's the same. At some point, it will feel like you're just doing the same thing every day because that's what you're doing. Well, if you go into a store and to buy something and then you go into the store next door and the store next door and the store next door and they are all the same layout, even if it's a different product, if it's the exact same layout, it doesn't feel great because it feels like you're just walking through one store and oh, they're doing all this and all that. And the advantage to big box stores and all that is that the idea is, yes, they do everything. They don't usually go to the extreme high end value of items, but it's the idea is the one stop do what you need for speed and convenience. But when you're coming to uh, a smaller store or a middle sized store, people are looking for that unique element. Like, why should I go to your store over this person's store? If you're exactly the same, I'm going to the one that's cheapest in price and or closest to my house. That is all I will ever do. I would never go anywhere else. There is no need to do it. The unique aspect is why people come to your store, right? It's your sale. It's how do you sell yourself? How do you sell your product? How do you sell your business? And if everybody sells it the same way, then you're selling nothing, right? I can understand like an exterior visual because at that point you have Oh, you want some conformity into the way the town looks. You want some conformity into this. It kind of makes sense. But everybody should be able to put up, you know, posters in their window that say different things because, you know, you need to sell your business and your idea. And if everybody was doing exactly the same thing, it's just you'd never know what you were doing. You'd never know where you were. You, as I say, I, I can't really express how much I hate the concept. <laughs> For me, the uniqueness is what actually sells a business rather than the similarities. Somebody mentioned it the other day. There's another game store locally that sells a similar product to me. And they've been to that store. It's a nice store. There's nothing wrong. It's a great store, but my play space is bigger. And so he told everybody there, hey, this place is great. They've got a bigger play space. We can get more people in there. And that was so it was, that's my unique thing. That store maybe has they have a few other like tables or a few other options that are there and they have probably more options in actual product items than me. But the play space was what the other person cared more about. And so having the option, having the ability to offer something different to somebody else will always increase your traffic. I'm familiar with the area and other game stores as well. There's something that I've noticed about you. It seems like you are also more collaborative with other stores too, even though you have some unique stuff. And yes, they're your direct competition. 
Um, you also work with some other owners as well on, I don't know all what, but I think that's also unique, but also a great thing too. You recognize the differences and you can collaborate on other things or support each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this is, yeah, another store that we're talking about. Uh, the owner and I, he's been in business for two years. Uh, he just had his two year anniversary. And every time I'm in, confused or I need to figure something out, he is usually the first person I go to. Uh, it has nothing to do to me with competition because once you are five miles apart, there are enough people to share, right? It's, there is a lot of value in having two of the same stores work together. If you imagine us, okay, if you had imagined that they were owned by the same person, you would say, it makes sense. This store has a bigger play space. This one has more product. They work together. They can share the load and say, hey, look, I've, you know, I've got a lot of this different product here, right? You're going to have more variety of this kind of stuff. So, you know, if you need that, go here. But if we're getting a little cramped, here's another store you can go play at. And the, yes, all the money's funneling to one guy. But just take that with two guys and it works the same way, right? I have more play space. I can offer different things. I have room for a ton of board games and things at my store. Whereas he has probably more detailed like card games and he has like a couple premium events he can run, things like that. That means a lot of the people who aren't into the heavier games or into the premium play style of card games can come to me and all the people who want the heavy gaming or the like heavy competition card games can go to him and we balance out each other's like load. And so working together makes more sense. Um, the other part of it also kind of weirdly comes from this joke in the industry is that all we're trying to do is conquer the world um, because everybody's a nerd, they just don't know it yet. And everybody has something that they nerd out about. Some people nerd out about sports. Some people nerd out about card games. Some people nerd out about math or science, right? Everything out there it has a nerd to do with it. But the difference is when we work together like this and say, hey, our group is like this, it helps us reach people who never would have reached before, right? There are people who are at the local college, like college professors, right? And they, let's say there's somebody who's obsessed with science, simple science. And they would really like more people to learn simple science. There's a company called Genius Games that makes science-based games. And they get put in science articles all the time about how accurate and detailed their games are. But they're a game company first, so they make them fun. So that gives me an opportunity to then connect with the science nerds and the board game nerds and go, hey, look, we can be one group now. And so the idea is this way, all the nerds will conquer the world. It's just, we're all nerds in our own way. And what I love about you, like working with other leaders is in my experience, sometimes being in management, being in leadership, it can be so isolating. You could be dealing with so much on your own and you have to problem solve all these things. And then if you're an owner of a company, that's like tenfold, if not a hundredfold because now you are the one who has to make all these decisions and you can't go to someone else, except for you can, because you're working with other, um, other store owners, other leaders in the community to be able to solve those problems collaboratively, even if they're your competition, they're also one of your greatest resources. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. They've been very, very helpful. Um, there are probably a good, 10 ish stores within a pretty normal drive for me. And I think all but two of them have 
reached out to me and offered as much help as I would need to open the store. Because once again, that's, that's what we want. We want more, more stores means more availability to product, means more people will come to the area and play, which gets more customers for everybody. And yes, at some point there would be an oversaturation, but especially with where I'm at now, uh, this industry is very much a growing industry. Um, so the competition doesn't really need to be as extreme as it can be in others. And at times I feel like that competition actually lowers the quality of an industry. A weird one to use would be kind of like the music industry. Uh, there are so many artists now, so many people, and that's great. That leads to a ton of things. But so much of the industry is now, hey, why you? Not how do you, how are you like this person? How could you two collaborate and do this? It's why should I pick you over this person? And that's all that matters. And so it turns into this massive competitive industry of people just trying to write whatever the next quick pop hit is that will last a week before the next one takes over. Not, hey, how can we make this album that will last a lifetime, which is the older music industry. Like, once again, if you think about most albums that come out in the next, well, I'd say in the last five, no, probably like 10 years, right? I listen to one or two songs on an album, I enjoy those, and then I don't enjoy the rest of the album, right? But if you were to play me a song by not even one of the greats, just a good band from, you know, like the 70s, 80s, 90s, I can listen to that album from start to finish and maybe there's a song, one song I don't like, because they got to spend more time honing their craft working with other artists and coming up with this collaborative like fantastic set of music and they're not being put in this position where they have to churn out music you know constantly and that's kind of where we are in the industry we're at the point where we're building and right now what's more important is hey, the more we work together, the more of these games we will get to try and see and we get to find out, you know, what's, what the world's like and how everybody feels about it. We haven't really hit that. Oh, we need to compete to the point where we're trying to hurt each other. We only need to help each other. And that's all that's happening right now. And it's been very, very good for the industry. So we are winding down on this topic, but I, I want to bring it back to like the type of leader you want to be for your team. So would you say you collaborating with your community, with other owners, has also helped you in ways to collaborate with your own team and be able to be supportive for them as well? I would say it's a mix of both. So I did the business faux pas of hiring my best friend. But having him here has given me so much more confidence to just go, hey, I'm going to try this. Because he will just look at me and call me an idiot to my face. No questions. He'll just be like, this is dumb. And that's almost a superpower as a leader to have a employee, subordinate, whatever you want to call them, just have them have the ability to just go, no, stop it. You're, you're being dumb here, right? Having somebody able to do that really helps. And so it's as much as communicating with the community and with the other business owners has helped me be a better leader to my staff more than anything, allowing my staff the freedom to do what they need has made me more welcoming to contact the other stores or find it easier to do so. Because they will be like, oh, this store has this really great thing, you should talk with them. And then they like, they were like, oh yeah, no, go to the store, he's a super nice guy, mention my name. 
and then so that's what happened. It's um, the other store owner that I mostly collaborate with and call for questions. He was introduced to me by my best friend. Um, and he did that because he was like, hey, I love the store. The store is great. And you like you don't need to mimic it perfectly. He knew I wasn't going to. He knew where my loyalties lie within the board game industry and what I enjoy the most. But knowing that he had respect for the way he handled his business told me he's doing something I need to look into. And um, communication is not perfect, as I say. I mean, I'm certainly not good at it. But by sharing, collaborating with my best friend, it has taught me, hey, I should share and collaborate with others. So rather than say that communicating with the owners in the community helped me be a better leader, communicating with my friends helped me communicate with those people first, which then helped me uh, communicate as a leader. I would even go further saying your ability to trust your staff and have confidence in them, you've been able to grow and learn from them as well because of that. I think you have to. If, mm -hmm. if you are running a business where you don't trust your staff to handle, I would say 75% of the load, then you cannot handle the remaining 25%. Uh, it is tiring, endlessly tiring to think you need to solve problems. Uh, just thinking you need to, not even trying to solve them yet, just being like, this is on me, wears you out. Um, and there was a time I was burnt out in my first like three months. I was dead. I was completely worn out. And then one of them, I don't remember which employee it was now at this time, I'm afraid, but one of them, came up with a solution to something. And it was so simple and so elegant, but that's not the brain, way my brain works. So I would never have thought of it. And they solved this problem for me. And it had been a problem for a good two, three weeks. And they just turned around and said, well, why don't you try this? And I was like, I'll take anything at this point. Solved the whole problem in like two days. We, everything was back to how it was supposed to be running. It was fantastic. And it's one of those things, and moments like that make me understand that I don't run this business. My employees run the business, right? They do all the work, but it is my job to make sure their jobs are easier. And that's all I have to do as a leader, right? If I can make it easier for them to do their work, then they, pretty much just handle the rest of it by themselves without ever needing me. And it's, it's worked really, really well because they have some ownership in what's going on. My workload is immediately lightened and it gives me a little more time to think things through on other areas that need to be worked on. So, uh, yeah, I would say, as much as you shouldn't hire your best friend, you should also hire your best friend. You need an employee that you are willing to trust pretty much 100%. If you have one or two employees that you can trust to handle whatever needs to be handled the right way, then you can let them handle it and everything will just go so much smoother. I would even say you need an employee who, who has the ability to be honest with you. Because it can be intimidating to talk to a supervisor, but if they're willing also to be, give you that honest feedback, you get so much more value out of it. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree. It, it's important that they're able to be honest with you, um, but that also means you need to be willing to allow them oh, to yeah. be honest. And that means you need to be better at it. Uh, it. If I wasn't open with them about a lot of things, they probably wouldn't be open back. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode where we talk about Ben's growth in leadership.